Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Liu. I'm a family physician. The information out there is confusing, and especially in this past week, guidelines have been changing. Uh, some people say, don't wear masks. The CDC used to say, don't wear masks, and now they're saying, oh, we should be wearing a face covering. The WHO, or the World Health Organization, still says that the general public should not be wearing masks unless they are sick or unless they are caring for someone sick. Why is everyone saying something different? That's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. So I'm gonna look at three issues around masks. Number one, what are the types of masks that we're talking about? Number two, uh, what is the evidence around wearing masks? And number three, what is the role of pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic spread? Which means what is the role of people who are not symptomatic and are they spreading coronavirus? First, let's talk about the masks. So we have N95 masks, surgical masks, and cloth masks. Those are the masks that people are most commonly talking about. The N95 mask, the, the 95 in the N95 mask means that 95% of particles greater than three microns uh, are filtered through this mask if you are wearing it properly. So the N95 mask is a tight fitting sealed mask that covers your nose and mouth. And it's very important if you're wearing the N95 mask that it's fitted properly and that is tested to make sure it fits properly. Otherwise, it's just gonna let respiratory particles in. A surgical mask is traditionally used in an operating room. So the surgeons wear it so that they don't cough things into the patient when they're doing surgery. And nurses, of course, would wear it as well and anyone around the operating table. Surgical masks are also used when caring for patients. If you're in close contact with patients and either you are sick or the patient is quite sick and is sort of coughing things up and you wanna protect yourself um, as the wearer from any kinds of secretions that may be coming out from the patient. And then lastly, we have cloth masks. And cloth masks can be made of various different materials. They can have different layers. And depending on the material and the amount of layers, then the cloth masks will have different levels of effectiveness. So the question is, who should be wearing masks and what types of masks should they be wearing? The N95 mask is the most effective mask, and that should be worn by people who are doing aerosolizing procedures. So for example, if a patient is going to be intubated, there's a high chance that they're gonna cough and breathe out all these particles. So anyone doing an intubation should be wearing an N95 mask. Because we don't have enough N95 masks, then, then healthcare workers are generally using surgical masks for routine care. Now, these aren't as good as N95 masks, but in combination with other protective measures like face shields, hand washing, and isolation gowns, these do provide some protection for healthcare workers. Now, the reason why these masks need to be saved for healthcare workers, like the N95 and the surgical masks, need to be saved for healthcare workers is because healthcare workers are at the highest risk of getting infected. They are getting close to patients. They are within two meters of the patient and they're at highest risk of contracting the infection. If you're a member of the general public, then we ask you to save those masks for healthcare workers and instead use a cloth mask. This whole mask issue is complicated by the fact that there's a lack of supply of masks and also there's a lack of evidence around masks. Let's look at that evidence, okay? So CDC changed their guidelines. Why is the WHO and the government of Canada still not recommending that we wear masks? It's because the evidence around the novel coronavirus shows that it is spread through close contact not casual contact. What does close contact mean? It means that you're spending a significant amount of time, like 15 to 30 minutes, beside someone, within two meters of someone who has the disease. And that makes it more likely that you will catch the infection. That's close contact. Casual contact is like walking past someone at a grocery store. It's close contact that is thought to spread the novel coronavirus, not casual contact. That is why we see so many uh, cases of spread of the infection in households through people who have close contact within their household and also at events like house parties, conferences, and choir practices. These are all events in which people have close contact. So then I get the question, Dr. Liu, casual contact you're saying doesn't cause the spread of coronavirus, but what if I'm like at the grocery store and someone coughs in my face? Or what if like I walk past a runner who's just breathed into the air? Or what if someone coughs really hard and projects their cough particles, you know, like farther than two meters? Can I be infected? 
Let's look at a study that actually just came out this week in the Journal of Nature. This study looked at uh, the spread of three different types of respiratory particles. The influenza virus, and that's the flu, the rhinovirus, which is the common cold, and the seasonal coronavirus. The seasonal coronavirus is in the same family as the novel coronavirus. It's the novel coronavirus that's causing COVID-19. So the seasonal coronavirus is in the same family. You've probably been infected with the seasonal coronavirus probably multiple times. It causes like uh, uh, very similar symptoms to the rhinovirus. It causes the symptoms of a common cold and is pretty much uh, difficult to distinguish from the common cold. So in this study, which was a very small study, I'm gonna focus on the data around the seasonal coronavirus. And what the authors found was that when they had people wearing a mask compar compared to when they had people not wearing a mask, the mask did block the spread of respiratory droplets and aerosols. However, they also found that most people with a seasonal coronavirus actually did not have any virus in their respiratory droplets. So they were emitting respiratory droplets, but there was no virus in them. And the respiratory droplets that did actually have virus had a very low amount of virus compared to the amount of virus that was in their nose and in their throat. So the authors were saying that they weren't really sure if this amount of virus would be enough to cause disease. And also they were suggesting that this would confirm the fact that, um, that coronavirus requires close and prolonged contact, which is similar to what we've been talking about with the novel coronavirus requiring close and prolonged contact for spread. So not casual contact, close contact. And that's another reason why a mask may not really help you at the grocery store because a grocery store, as we mentioned, is a casual contact. So the reason why the CDC is now recommending face coverings is because of a concern about pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic spread. Uh, there's a period of about one to two days before you show symptoms of the novel coronavirus where you can actually be infectious and spread the virus to other people. A recent study from Singapore suggested that 6% of cases may have been related to pre-symptomatic spread. And another study in China suggested that maybe around 12% of cases may have been related to pre-symptomatic spread. Now, if you look at those numbers, you can see that the majority of spread is still from people who have symptoms. However, there is a portion of people who are asymptomatic who may be spreading the virus and that um, and using cloth masks may be able to prevent that. So first of all, we have um, asymptomatic spread, but also there's a concern that people with mild symptoms are not self-isolating. I, I talk to my patients and I hear stories of other people who have mild cold symptoms like a runny nose or a sore throat, and they're not self-isolating because they just think they have a cold. They don't think that these mild symptoms can be the novel coronavirus or COVID-19. But in some people, COVID-19 presents with these mild symptoms. And these people with mild symptoms can be contagious and they can spread it to other people who might have a bad infection. So getting people to wear face coverings can help prevent asymptomatic spread. They can help prevent people with mild symptoms from spreading their virus everywhere. And it can also help with people who refuse to self-isolate. And unfortunately, there are a lot more people than I would like who refuse to self-isolate for various reasons. Um, it could be financial reasons or just that they don't believe in the coronavirus, which is unfortunate. Having people wear a mask is called source control. We're preventing the virus from leaving the source. We're protecting others from getting the virus from you. Now, will wearing a mask protect you from getting the virus from others? As I've said before in this video, the virus is spread mostly by close contact, not by casual contact. So wearing a mask probably won't protect you too much from others. However, it will protect others from you. So think of wearing a mask as sort of like a public service. Now, if you decide to wear a mask, it's very important to wear the mask properly. If you don't wear the mask properly, it can actually increase your chance of infection because you can contaminate yourself. Let's take a quick look at cloth masks because that's probably the type of mask that most people will be using. What is the evidence around cloth masks? So as I said before, cloth masks can be made of various different materials. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of evidence around whether or not cloth masks are effective. In fact, 
One study that looked at healthcare workers wearing cloth masks actually found that the healthcare workers wearing cloth masks had a higher rate of infection than the healthcare workers using usual procedures, which included both no mask and surgical masks. Now, the authors have suggested various reasons for why the healthcare workers were getting more infections. Um, they, they looked at maybe the type of cloth masks that the healthcare workers were using, and they also looked at, um, suggested that maybe the healthcare workers weren't caring for their cloth masks properly, like perhaps they got damp, which would decrease the filtration power of the cloth mask. Because of the interest this week around cloth masks, those authors have been receiving a lot of questions and they posted a comment just this week talking about cloth masks. And they suggested that if healthcare workers are going to wear cloth masks, that they wash the cloth masks with soap and water every day and that they disinfect it with either like some kind of spray or with UV light during their breaks. Another study I looked at looked at different types of materials that can be used to make masks. They looked at scarves, t-shirts, towels, and sweatshirts, and different brands of different sweatshirts, and t-shirts, and scarves, and towels. And they found that towels were the best at filtrating uh, particles, at filtering, I mean, particles. And the Hanes sweatshirt was also very good at filtering particles. The towels and the Hanes sweatshirt were both more effective than a t-shirt and scarves. Other sources have looked at different layers of masks. If you are going to be making a mask, it's best to use a cloth that is um, less permeable and to use more layers. But the mask also has to be permeable enough for you to breathe through it. If you have a mask on and you're starting to feel dizzy or that you can't breathe, especially if you have a condition like asthma that makes it difficult to breathe to begin with, then I recommend you take off the mask. Now. If you are going to wear a mask, it's very important to wear it properly because if you don't wear it properly, it's not gonna work and actually it can increase your chance of infection. So first of all, before you put on the mask, uh, find out which is the front because some masks have a front and a back. And then you need to wash your hands with either soap or with hand sanitizer because you're gonna be touching your face when you put on the mask. So you take the mask and you put it on then you mold the mask to create as good a seal as possible around your face. You will need to make sure you cover both your nose and your mouth. I've seen pictures of people who just have the mask covering your mouth. That's useless because the particles can still go in your nose. I've seen pictures of people with a mask around their neck. Don't do that. So once you have the mask on, don't touch it. Don't, you can adjust it initially, but after that, don't touch it anymore. Don't lift it up to give yourself some food. Don't move it around because your nose is itchy. Do your best not to touch your mask. If for some reason you have to touch your mask, treat the front of your mask as contaminated as soon as you have it on and wash your hands right after you touch the mask. Now, the other part of the mask is taking it off. So when you take the mask off, First, you have to wash your hands again, okay? Don't touch your mask without washing your hands because you're gonna be touching your face. So you take the mask off. If you have ear loops, you take the mask off by your ear loops. If you have two strings, then you do the bottom string first and you lift it over your head. And then you do the top string and you lift the mask off your face. Don't let the mask touch your face and don't touch the front of your mask. Then you take the mask and you throw it in the washing area where if you have a cloth mask, you're gonna wash it with soap and water. Or if you have a disposable mask, you take it and you throw it in the garbage. Um, and then you have to wash your hands again because you could have contaminated yourself when taking off the mask. If your mask is damp or wet, then take it off, change to a new mask and either wash the mask or throw it away if it's a disposable mask. So these things are very important because otherwise, if you wear the mask, you're just gonna be putting yourself at higher risk. You can touch the front of your mask and inoculate yourself with, um, by touching your mouth or your nose or your eyes. And basically you'll negate the effect of wearing a mask. Some people look at Asian countries where it's much more common to wear a mask and they point to that and say, well, look, all these people in Asian countries are wearing a mask. That must be, that must be evidence that masks are effective. But in these countries, you have to remember that masks are combined with a lot of other public health measures like rigorous contact tracing and strict quarantine controls like wearing uh, bracelets to ensure that people don't leave their house in quarantine. And it's very hard to separate out the effect of masks from the effect of all those other public health measures. 
One of the biggest concerns that health officials have is that wearing a mask will give people a false sense of security. They're worried that people are gonna do things they wouldn't normally do because they have a mask on. When you have a mask on, you still need to observe physical distancing and you still need to, to, to do your hand washing. And wearing a mask doesn't mean you can ignore those things. It doesn't mean you can now go to a house party. It doesn't mean you can walk close to people and start visiting your friends. It's very important to maintain physical distancing. I know it's hard. It's been quite a few weeks now and it's starting to wear on us. We're wondering how long it's gonna be, but the reassuring news is that it's starting to show results. We are seeing the number of new cases going down. We are seeing some of the curves in some countries starting to level off as a result of our physical distancing actions. You have to remember that once a measure is taken like physical distancing, it takes about two weeks for those measures to show up in the numbers. So if you're not seeing a lot of changes in the numbers in your area, you have to remember that these things take time and we have to stick to the plan. We have to keep physical distancing, keep hand washing, and keep taking care of each other as much as possible so that we can all get through this challenging time. I'm Dr. Yvette Liu. Stay well, and I'll see you next time.